name's Sybil Montague. Um, I grew up in Cork and I'm an artist and I live in Dublin. When I was in school, I thought that an artist was someone that spent a lot of time in a studio with maybe behind a, an easel or with stone. I probably thought about it uh, maybe in a more traditional way. Whereas now, um, I think what an artist does can be so vast. It can be anything really, or work with any material. So I don't remember deciding to become an artist. I think I just always enjoyed making art. Uh, I actually found school quite uh, difficult, the way it was all um, geared towards points and academic and art felt, the art room in our school felt the kind of the freer space to experiment um, and develop your own ideas and your own expressions. So at some point I decided to go to art school and I guess possibly that's when I decided to be an artist. Um, when I left art school, uh, what I, maybe the more significant thing that, which was becoming an artist was getting a studio with friends. Um, a group of us found, looked for empty spaces and found the landlords and then set up these studio spaces. Um, we would make work and then throw parties and invite people over to come and see the work. And I think that idea of working in a collective kind of helped me uh, how to be an artist in the world. Later, maybe when I, my first exhibition and I sold my first piece of work was maybe the moment when I thought, okay, maybe this is, this is my job. A typical day for me in the studio, well, it, it starts typical. I, I go to the studio like it's a, my job, you know, every morning. Um, I usually make a plan of what I intend to do and then inevitably the day is always different. Um, I, it depends what I'm working on. I'm usually, I work with a lot of different materials. So if I have a project coming out up, then I will focus on those particular materials, making work, but then I have other days where I will be spending quite a lot of time looking for material. Um, in Dublin, that means maybe walking around the city a lot. Um, I source a lot of my material from the city. The, a typical day is basically that every day is different in a sense. There's no real typical day. <laughs> I mostly work in sculpture now. So um, a lot of the materials I use for my sculpture are what you call fan material. So materials that are uh, very familiar from um, from our commodities, so I use a lot of materials that you would find in supermarkets or in hardware stores or disposable material, um, but also objects, cons uh, consumer objects, things I call super mundane objects like you know a bottle of coke, or I've worked with sunbeds and I've worked with vegetables, and fruit, um, so it's a really wide vocabulary. Um, of material. My favourite part of making work is probably the fact that I am, it's always a surprise. You never, um, you never really know what's going to happen next because your work can kind of take you anywhere or your interests. Um, so you might plan to make a particular object um, or performance or so on and then it will come out completely different in that sense so the creative process is kind of like this it's kind of like a magical process where all these other aspects come in and um, and that's that's enjoyable you know I mean sometimes working and not knowing what's happening would sound like something negative right but it can be quite exciting to kind of work in that space because you can work with any material now, the idea of being an artist has expanded so much. So you can, you know, anything is potentially material for an artwork, like, you know, this tree or air or grass or... 
So, and in the same way, you can kind of connect with a lot of different fields. So you can work with farmers or you can work with chefs or you could find a scientist. And I think that artists as a role, they really have the ability to move between all these different areas and jobs and areas of um, expertise. And sometimes with projects bring a huge mixture of these um, fields together. So artists are almost like, you know, this thread that can move through all these different areas of society. It's quite free. It's a freedom to move around and explore anything you want to. So that freedom is great. The idea, I, I guess, the more I work with all these materials, um, these commodified materials, um, when I try, when I think about the origin or where they've come from originally, that origin is always nature um, or uh, animal or so on. So I guess with my intervention as an artist with those materials, I try and point at that. And it comes from a place of realizing that a lot of the things we interact with, we have the origin or how they arrived to us is kind of invisible or disappeared or erased. So it's trying to highlight those things. And I'm particularly interested in the snake or the serpent in relation to um, a, a pre-Christian view of Ireland. Certainly in Ireland that we had a perspective of um, our environment that was far more um, holistic. Um, and the snake, you know, that the, we have a lot of stories obviously with St. Patrick driving out the snake. And in my mind, I feel like that that's the moment when possibly we moved away from that perspective. Um, um, and I like this idea of a biomimicry um, and just looking at maybe biomimicry being looking at nature as ways to live um, as for solutions as how to live in our environment. I'm using my work at the moment to maybe find these pathways back to that perspective of nature and that perspective of the world.